Woofa. Red, white, and blue was up strong tonight, even though one wrestler seemed to have accomplished it. But despite it not being, you know, uh, championship matches, for a feed name, it was not a bad show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Simply Summon Something. This is NXT Great American Bash Night 1. Okay. So, NXT Women's uh, Number 1 Contender Fiddle 4 Way Number 1 Contendership match. I thought this was extremely great action, and I called it, and I knew it. The Garganos and the Limitless, as uh, they put on commentary, ha, clever pun, I knew that they would cause each other. LeRae basically being handicapped by everybody, being eliminated first by Mia Yim, only for Mia Yim to be caught up after delivering so food to Tegan Knox by uh, Dakota Kai with Ben O'Connor Rowe, and it came down to former friends, finally duking it out, maybe finally setting the rivalry. In the end, Tegan Knox with the Molly go round and the Chinese Widow, she got the win over, sorry, Casey, uh, King Kai, Dakota Kai, in a very competitive opening match. I'm so happy for her with everything she's gone through, and I'm looking very forward to the match coming up with, between her and Io Shirai for the NXT Women's Championship. Date to be determined. Uh, moving on from there, we go into Damian Priest, and basically he wants another piece of Cameron Grimes, who needs to pay for his action. The beating, he says, on him will live forever. We'll see if Cameron Grimes accepts the challenge later on. Probably not. Moving on from there, we had a classic map-based physical brawl between Only Larkin and Timothy Thatcher, and I really enjoyed that these two men beating the hell out of each other. Once again, Thatcher going back to his roots through his schools of submissions. He ends the match with a ridiculous Fujiwara armbar. Probably broke uh, Ole Lorcan's arm when you think about it. He literally had it straight up extended. Very competitive back and forth match with Ole showing that he can once again fight with the best of them. All the classes were delivered here, including half and half, the running uppercut, the blockbuster, and even Ole Lorcan pulled off a couple of submissions of his own, including an uh, ankle lock, but not enough to stop Timothy Thatcher. You're not stopping this submission guy. Carrying Cross and <clears throat> the Dark Angel uh, Scarlet Day deliver a very interesting message about the future and about how basically time it's not what you take away from it it's basically what's not put into it it's basically what you take away from it, not put in bodies folks take talk i have a funny feeling he really is ready to redefine nxt scary things are to come folks just the same especially with that terror called about judgment maybe the next day could be themed judgment day i missed that pay-per-view going on from there this was your humorous match of the night. We are really destroying Alina Robert Stone, but hey, it gives the two something to do, and in the end, who knows what's next now? Who knows who Robert Stone might try to reach out to next? We are just done with those two. Now she can focus on bigger, bad things, maybe the NXT Women's Championship. It was humorous, very interesting finish, which she put on her uh, reverse Clovery submission, aka the Prison Trap, on both. And the number one thing she enjoyed, she got to legally beat up Robert Stone. Not bad. Moving on from there, we look at Prime Target as we hype up the winner takes all match for next week between the Lumilus, Keith Lee, North American Champion, and Adam Cole, baby, the NXT Champion. I am looking extremely forward to this match as Adam Cole, he acknowledges all the accolades, accomplishments, and milestones that Keith Lee has done. However, Adam Cole, he takes crap a lot because who spearheaded that movement? Who led the front? Who fought Daniel Bryan with the NXT title on the line on SmackDown? Who fought Seth Rollins on Monday Night Raw with the NXT title on the line? Who fought Pete Dunne at Survivor Series with the NXT title on the line? Won all those matches. Adam Cole did, baby. Keith Lee had the most of Brock Lesnar. Still lost the Royal Rumble. Keith Lee had the most at Survivor Series Roman Reign. Still lost the Survivor Series match. But hey, he retained the North American Championship, and he truly is something special. Bottom line is this. Why Keith Lee believes is unstoppable, Adam Cole is undisputed, baby. And the bottom line is this. I think Keith Lee is about to reach his limit when it comes to his North American title run. That's my quick pick on thoughts on that. Moving on from there, a very psychological match with Dexter Lewis and Roderick Strong. It was everything I thought it would be, including a return of a trunk, a much smaller trunk, by the way, in the form of Ford Viper, that Strong almost got stuffed in. But hey, kudos to Strong, facing his fears head on. Amazing power moves here with the uh, Olympic Slam and really getting the better just limits for most of this match, including some help from his uh, friend in uh, Bobby Fish in the Undisputed Era. But it was not enough to overcome the Dexter Loomis, who not only used the strap to his advantage, but strong spear. In the end, he locked him to a submission, which is now called Silence. And Dexter Loomis won. The mind games continue, and strong spears still very much remain alive. Tough break. We go backstage, Cancel Ray feels like she was basically put into a handicap match, and again, she wants a piece of Mia Yim, but not done with each other. They confront each other backstage as Gargano looks on, he just watches on as Isaiah Swerve Scott comes into play, tries to break it up. We're probably getting Isaiah Swerve Scott versus Johnny Gargano, but not surprised me it was booked next week. It has not been booked yet, but what has been booked is a street fight between Mia Yim and Cancel Ray. This has to end, but I don't think it's going to. It's just going to reach a whole nother chapter, because you know in a street fight, anything goes. 
with that being said, moving on from there, we once again learn about what the former El Hijo del Fantasma, now Santos Escobar, is trying to do with the NXT Cruiserweight Championship, and basically the art form of wrestling known as Lucha Libre. He wants to eradicate it, unmask, in his image, in El Fuego del Fantasma's image, or excuse me, Legado del Fantasma's image. And in the end, Drake Maverick, who still wants to fight for his dreams, he comes out, tries to go out to the champ, but of course, what some people call Arcatel, I just call, you know, his henchman, basically, his backup. I don't think they're equals at all. Uh, they get the bad Drake Maverick, and as soon as Santos was gonna try and finish him off again, here comes Brizongo. Impromptu six-man tag stuff for next week. It'll be the first time that we'll see all Legado del Fantasma in six-man action. Should be a very interesting match. Hammond Grimes! The only thing over with him is his hat. There, I said it. He claims he's number one contender. Give me a break in the immoral words of Mean Gene. No way in hell. And you think you're done with Damian Priest, and Damian Priest isn't done with you. Mercedes Martinez, she'll be in action next week. She's here, taking no punches. Not here fun to prove a point to be noticed. Should be a serious match. I'm gonna guess she's gonna face Santana Garrett. Main event, dream match, past first president of NXT regarding the future. It was incredible between Sasha Banks and Io Shirai. I wonder what's next for Finn Balor, by the way. I really enjoyed this match. And in the end, all hijinks aside, by the way, their entrance like a boss. And Sasha Banks, kudos to you coming out actually representing the red, white, and blue. Really encompassing what they were trying to do with this set. That looked really nice, too. Io Shirai won Asuka, and Io stands tall in the middle of the ring. Both as champions. I don't see that changing anytime soon. I love seeing Asuka back in NXT, and she used the mist. Why, I believe the Great American Bash title was unnecessary. It was a really good episode of NXT, and I really enjoyed it. Again, NXT, my favorite thing of the week from WWE. It's as simple as that. We got some wild matches that are coming up next week. I'm sure more are to be booked, and bottom line is this. I think you all would really enjoy NXT if you watched it. Now, thinking about something else I could take away, while well, Sasha Banks got missed in the face, haven't seen that for a while, I'm sure she's not done with uh, Io Shirai with a long shot or NXT. I wouldn't mind seeing her again or Sasha and Billy defend those tag titles against Io Shirai and Asuka, former tag team champions, tag team partners in Japan, if you all remember correctly. But... Well, with that being said, that's my time here, and that's all I have to say on NXT Great American Bash. Thank you so much for tuning in. Did you watch it? Did you enjoy it? Did you simulcast like I did both AEW, Firefest, Great American Bash? Are you going to do the same thing? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm just a simple man, a lifelong fan of wrestling. This has been Simple and Summon Something in 7. I hope you all take care and enjoy a lot. Tomorrow's never guaranteed. Treasure your families and enjoy wrestling. There's more of it now than ever. And until the next video, right here from the comfort of my room, have a wonderful day. Thank you.